Hi everyone, my name is Vince Galman. Thank you for joining me today. So as more truths come out, more dark truths, more startling truths, more unsettling truths, more disturbing truths, what we're seeing is that there still is a lot of cognitive dissonance. There's still a lot of resistance out there amongst the wider populace. There's still a lot of, well, this has got to be a conspiracy theory and you're a conspiracy theorist. There's a lot of, no way, no way. That's just absolutely not true. So whether that's within the context of the fake vaccine bioweapon, or the false climate crisis narrative, or the truth about child trafficking and how extensive it is on ground, below ground, above ground, because children are taken off this planet. Whether it's to do with what's sprayed from military and commercial aircrafts, aluminum, barium, etc whether about what's purposely put in our water system, like fluoride. These are huge, huge truths. It's, it's, it's a big deal <laughs> to realize that our trusted leaders are psychopathic mass murderers who have a depopulation eugenics plan to reduce us to about 800 million, 90% reduction and that this plan has been in the works for a long time. They have been scheming and scheming in their think tanks, in their private, secluded, secret, secret society meetings, the Bilderberg Group, you know, the, the Council for Foreign Relations. They've been gathering for a long, long time, scheming together, plotting these very intelligent people, and they are intelligent, um, and they're also very deft psychologists. They could teach classes on psychology. They're, they're master manipulators. They're master deceivers. They are, they could, they, they're fabulous actors. They could win awards for their performances, saying, convincing the populace that th this is for your, the greater good and safety, which is the tagline of tyranny going back in time for the greater good and safety safe and effective, stay together by staying apart. Put this suffocating mask on your three-year-old. So they're, 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 they're awesome con artists. And it's so big for people to, to take these truths to heart. And the strange irony, the strange irony is that these truths are so monstrous, monstrously big. They're so huge. These truths, or you could call them lies, because they're actually lies, that the public can't see them. Isn't that interesting? That See, that's part of the strategy. The part of the strategy is to make it so big, so devastatingly big, that the public can't see it because the public just says, no way, that, that would never happen. They would never, ever do that to us. You're a conspiracy theorist. That's part of the strategy. That's part of their, their deceit. That's actually part of their intelligence is, is that people can't believe that. And one reason why people can't believe that in today's age at this time is because many countries that once experienced tyranny, many European Western nations that once experienced tyranny in the past, the not so distant past, have had a lot of freedoms today. We've lived for the most part with a lot more freedoms, a lot more civil rights than we have for the, for the majority of the past 5,000 years. The majority of the past 5,000 years Countries, nations, people have been ruled by tyrannical regimes. This is, this is a rare time when we actually have had some freedom. We haven't been fully controlled, suffocated 
by monarchies, by the church, by the Inquisition, whatever it might be. So, so people have taken this for granted and they also have not explored history. They have not become historically literate. And that's part of the problem as well. They don't understand the history of tyranny. And I bet you if you went up to 100 people on the street and said, what is tyranny? I bet you a decent percentage wouldn't know. They wouldn't even be able to give you an example of what it is. Give me one example of tyranny. Give me some of the, the hallmarks of tyranny. What is, what is the way it, it operates? What is the way, it, give me some of its propaganda strategies. Most people are, are illiterate when it comes to understanding darkness. They don't have what I call dark wisdom. And I want to say on a side note, a lot of people who have dark wisdom are people who are born and raised in oppressive countries, oppressive cultures, or who are born and raised in very difficult childhood um, environments. Difficult, toxic childhood environments, difficult, toxic uh, countries, nations, cultures. What they do is, as painful as they are, it creates a wisdom. It creates an awareness. It creates a sensitivity. It creates a discernment. A discernment to be able to spot lies. And I just want to invite you to think for a moment that if you grew up in a very toxic environment, maybe that's a redemptive blessing that you have is that you are able to see the lies, you're able to see the corruption, you're able to see the, the abuse. And the reason is you, the reason you can is because of what you endured and other people who had it easier can't. But you can. So in a way, your hard beginnings um, prepared you to awaken in a way that, that people who had it easier have not been able to be awakened, if you're understanding me. So that's a way we can actually find some blessing or some gift and what gifts and what has been a very difficult journey for us. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to take a sip. So people struggle for all these reasons to see the sweeping lies, the sweeping darkness. They have cognitive dissonance. Now, what we hear um, is people say, well, the reason why they can't take this information in is because it's too paradigm busting. It's too threatening to their belief systems. And that is true. That is true, except the truth runs deeper than that. And that's the heart of, of this video. That's the heart of this video is where ultimately is that threat touching in the psyche of the individual? It's actually not the beliefs. It's the believer, the believer. It's the one identified with the beliefs. It's the false self identified with what's false. It's the worldly self made from the world identified with worldly ideas that are lies, that are satanic. It's the illusory self, the temporary self, al who aligns with believes in what are illusions, what are temporary. So the metaphor we can turn to is the caterpillar. The caterpillar gives itself to the tomb womb of of dissolution and rebirth and becomes the butterfly. And the butterfly represents the higher self, our angelic self, angel wings. Caterpillar represents the earthly self. And what does the caterpillar pillar like to do? It, it likes to munch, it likes to eat. In fact, caterpillars will eat up to about 27,000 times their body weight to prepare for the vigorous dissolution in their chrysalis tomb womb, or what I like to sometimes call their mystery school. <laughs> if any of you know the mystery schools of old, from Greece, Egypt, etc., etc. 
um, Mount Carmel. So the caterpillar is the lower self and it, and it sacrifices itself for higher truth. It, it gives up its worldly self for higher truth. It walks to its cross for its crucifixion, right? It walks to its cross for its crucifixion and it sacrifices everything for truth. Everything for truth. It's not the beliefs. It's the lower identity. It's the lower self that is completely sacrificed. And in today's world, what's going on right now, it's not ultimately the beliefs that are at stake. It is the believer, the lower self, the lower false self, the illusory self. That is what is at stake, everyone, not the beliefs. The beliefs are the ripples of the ocean. Go deeper into the deeper part. Go to that which gives rise to those beliefs. It's the false self. And that is why I wrote a free ebook which I have linked in the description, and it's called A Global Crucifixion. And I invite you to see what's happening right now in the world as a global crucifixion. Because what's at stake right now is, excuse me, <laughs> what's at stake right now is the false self, the believer, the self that has bought into the lies, the self that, um, got fooled. That's what's at stake, everyone. And so Jesus, and I'm not a Christian, but I work closely with Jesus and as an ascended master, and I work closely with him in my online healing and activation ceremonies. I've written a lot about him. He's central to that ebook. Um, Jesus, Jesus's colossal teaching was to sacrifice the false self. It's not about sacrificing the body on a wooden cross. That's not what these times are about. We can look to the cross as showing us the way of truth. The T of the cross stands for truth. In fact, the cross, Jesus said to me, because I, I talked to Jesus once in a while, and Jesus said to me, it's time for people to not see the cross anymore as simply a symbol. But instead, it must be seen as an altar, an altar to alter consciousness. Get it? The play on words? <laughs> and I love play on words. So it's an altar to alter consciousness. It's not simply a symbol. and It's not a torture device. It's more than that. Now we need to offer ourselves to the holy cross of truth and to lose ourselves, to dissolve, die to the truth. Not physical death, but more symbolic death. Death of the false self, death of the caterpillar establishment within that identifies with the caterpillar establishment out there. They don't want us becoming butterflies, the dark rulers. They want us to be munching, distracted, caterpillars that they pour chemtrails all over, <laughs> right? They don't want us empowered. They don't want us to awaken to our angel wings, our butterfly wings. So I want to tell you a story. I, um, I've done a lot of work on myself, a lot of inner work, and I've, I've drank a lot of um, plant medicine. I worked uh, extensively with the spirit plant medicine, ayahuasca, um, with some excellent shamans. Um, I don't anymore, but that was an important um, period of, of my healing and awakening. It helped me heal many, many complex issues. And in one ceremony, uh, I was I was confronted with this old belief that I had, and the belief was I am wrong. A similar belief that may be more resonant for you personally is I am bad. These are common shame-based beliefs. So I was confronted with this old belief of I am wrong that um, was connected to unresolved childhood sexual trauma. And in the ceremony, I was sitting upright 
and my eyes are closed and we have you have these mystical visions and suddenly this little kind of glass bubble spaceship flew in front of me and inside was this was this little being and he said to me jump in <laughs> it was just floating in front of my vision and i said okay and i just like a curious child um risk taking i just jumped in and he flew me around and it was if you imagine i think when i recall um the death star from star wars and if you go inside the center if you remember them going inside the center of the death stars it's like this huge empty chamber and it was like that we flew into this huge empty chamber and we were flying around what looked like come kind of like a tall thin hourglass and we were flying around this huge chamber around this tall thin hourglass and the alien pointed at that and he said do you know what that is i said what he said that is your belief i am wrong and basically i was then given a choice what do you want to do with it and i thought about it I, I thought, I don't think it's about saying I am right. It's about saying I am not wrong. But then as soon as I contemplated saying I am not wrong, I felt a tremendous fear in me come up. And what I realized at that moment was that there was a death in me if I let that go, because this is the key word, everyone, I had an allegiance to it. I had an allegiance to it. I had an attachment to the story that I was wrong. And so if I decided I was no longer wrong, there's a death. There is a death of the self that holds on to that story. There's a death of my story. And I decided bravely to say, I am not wrong. And then I went through an incredibly intense, very visceral experience that included when I was laying on my back, my sacrum bouncing off the ground, up and down off the ground for um, a good while. I had a really powerful clearing. But this is the thing is that I was letting go of my story, me, I, me, my story. And the thing is, is that when we, when we create space in ourselves by releasing my story, we're releasing the me, ultimately. We're releasing the me of my story. And when we release that, we make room for mystery. You see? We make room for mystery. So from my story and me, to mystery. Look how closely those words are. My story, mystery, the me underwriting my story dissolves and space is made for mystery. And the more we do that, we make room for, we open to mastery. Isn't that a cool play on words? My story, mystery, mastery. I encourage you to write those down and see how closely those words are. But ultimately it's the me it's the me of my story. It's the me. It wasn't just about getting rid of the, the belief. It, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that huge of a psycho, biological, soul, visceral response in that ceremony, that ayahuasca ceremony, if it was simply a belief. It was the allegiance. It was the identity that had to die. And so I was put on the cross. I died to the cross of truth. And what is the truth? The truth is, I am not wrong. I never was. And that I'm good. And I'm pure. And I'm loving. And I'm kind. And I'm beautiful. I'm a good man. I'm a good person. And I deserve love. And all these things are also true about you. But we have these unconscious allegiances that are false, and that creates the false self. And it's that false self that is at stake these days. And it's that false self that is increasingly being ushered to the altar cross of truth to be altered as I was. 
This is a global crucifixion, everyone, because what's at stake as these massive truths come out is not the paradigms. It's deeper than that. It's existential. These are unbearable truths because they're too confronting to the false self. They're too confronting to the false self that is identified with a false story. This is, again, Jesus' teaching. We must understand that. That's central to my free ebook linked in the description. This is deeper. So when you see people say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, when you, when you see people say this is rubbish, this is conspiracy theory, and yet they don't spend one single minute researching on that conspiratorial subject matter, it means it's too threatening to the false self. They would rather lose themselves to lies than lose themselves to truth, right? They would rather lose the truth of who they are to lies than lose who they are not to truth. And because the matrix machine is based on lies and the false self is based on lies, there's a codependent relationship where my lie feeds your lie and my lie feeds your lie. Get it? They're sending us lies and we love lies, so we'll eat those lies and it's a loop. It's a loop. Lie feeding lie leading lie. So it's a lying machine and people who are identified with lies want more lies. And so when truth comes around, it's a great, great threat to the entire system. And so the system is collapsing right now. And that's actually a compassionate thing. Because it is because people are so complacent, and people are so um, lazy, and people are so unwilling to do the work and to seek truth. And they honestly, they just lack common sense as well. <laughs> so because people are not willing to do the work, they, um, because people are so attached to the lies, because the allegiance is so strong within themselves to their own lies, and by extension, allegiance outward as well to the lies out there, they're not, and because they're not going to do ayahuasca, they're not going to do the work, the system collapses. The system of lies collapses, and that's going to create a global crucifixion because they are going to be crucified whether they like it or not because they won't be able to avoid what's coming out. And it's going to be very disturbing for them, and they're going to need some significant help therapeutic help, healing help, because of what's going to surface for them. Because as the system collapses, as truth is revealed, it's going to really um, break things open in them. And they're going to need help dealing with, being with, healing, all of that that is emerging, surfacing, twisting, turning in them. Because it's just that big. And especially this is true for, for parents when they realize what they have exposed their children to. They're going to need some serious support. It's one thing to realize you have received the bioweapon. It's another thing to realize you allowed the bioweapon to be injected into your children. That's an entirely different level of grief. That's an entirely different level of horror. So this is a global crucifixion because it is absolutely huge what's happening. And it is not the beliefs. It is not the paradigms. It is the believer that is at stake. That is what is being sent to the cross of truth as truth emerges. As truth emerges, people are being put on the cross of truth. It's happening. And there's going to be huge heartbreak. And in that heartbreak, there's going to be um, a real humility. 
Uh, I, I thought I knew I was wrong. There's going to be a lot of self-blame, lots of self-shame. It's going to be incredibly heartbreaking and incredibly... It's going to be a deeply humbling, humbling experience that is going to be difficult for so many. And yeah, they're going to need support. They're, and this is their crucifixion. This is their crucifixion. But we can't keep on going like this, everyone. We can't. The system has to collapse. The web of lies, the matrix, mind tricks has to collapse. It is the most compassionate thing. And so when you see the many uh, truth tellers out there saying they're destroying our system, well, yes, they are, but we must look paradoxically. We must understand that this actually, this is the caterpillar dissolving. It's the caterpillar establishment that is dissolving, that can't keep functioning based on lies, based on a financial system that is a complete lie. Ruled, we've been ruled by the banksters for a long time. It can't keep going like this. It has to collapse. That's the only way. So it is not enough simply to say they're destroying things. We must look deeper look deeper into the deep truth that this is actually necessary. And that doesn't mean we don't call out the bullshit. I do that if you know my work. We call it out, we name it, we name the replacement, migra replacement migration, we name it all. They are purposely trying to destroy the United States right now. We name it. But can you hold both simultaneously in your heart? That on the one hand, they are trying to destroy the country, destroy the people, destroy our children. Can we name that as truth, but also at the same time say, and it, the most compassionate way to end this long era of darkness is for it to collapse. This is a 5,000 year old dark age, Kali Yuga. It is a long dark age. It's the most compassionate way it must dissolve. Can we hold both? And it's the initiated heart, the non-dual heart, that can hold the paradox of this crucifixion. Remember everyone, the solution is in the dissolution. Remember that play on words, because the word solution is literally in the word dissolution. Solve is in dissolve. What's also in the word solve is love, is love. So the most loving thing is for the system to end. And the greater the ending, the greater the love. And so what this is, is a great ending. And it's not the beliefs that are ultimately ending. It is the believer. And when the believer ends, we are reborn anew. We rise like the phoenix from the ashes. We are resurrected anew. We are resurrected. We ascend. We are born again from our crucifixion and we create a new story rooted in the mystery of a heart and a greater embodied sense of our mastery. So, Check out the free ebook. It's in the description. I have upcoming online healing and activation ceremonies. Um, check that out. Um, and please like, subscribe, click notifications, leave your comments, all that. My name is Vince Gelman, and thank you for listening and watching.